Hi everyone, Basil's Chapman sitting in for Tom O'Brien and I'm the host of the Tiger Technician's Hour at 10 o'clock in the morning, 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. and also the author of the opening call daily newsletter. What are we looking at? We're looking at the Dow down 312 points at 34,425. Look, Friday, a rally attempt fails, closes down fi over 500 points. Uh, no, that was Thursday. Friday, tries to rally, fails, closes over 500 points down and holds this orange line on the left here. This is the daily chart, 200 period moving average. Today, it's gone right through and it's turning the 200 period moving average of 34,600 into short term uh, resistance. If it goes above that, that's good. But right now, you've got to be watching it closely. This arch formation, let me just do this quickly. This is a part of the technique that I use. I straight line up or down, that's one. Cup formation, that's two. Arch formation, that's three. Come down sharply, make the arch formation, take out that left side low. It's red because that can be very serious to the downside. On the bullish side, reverse Y, take out the left side high after a move up. That can be very positive. What are we looking at here? We're looking at the first one for the Dow high of 36,952 on the 5th of January. Comes down to 35,639, tries to rally and then fails at the first peak and makes that H pattern and plummets. Goes all the way down to 33,150 on the 24th of January, and it rallies up and it stalls. And now you can see this is what I call a Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. It went above it for one session to 35,824 peak C, and now it's failing. This is really an important moment because the pattern, you, I'll show it a little bit better here on the S&P, here on the daily chart. Well, first of all, you've got the weekly chart of the Dow. Look, the weekly chart, sell mode in the daily, sell uh, a sell mode in the weekly chart, and the monthly chart, we're just going to wait for, we have to wait for all of February to get a, a, a lock on the actual closing price of February's monthly chart. And now we're going to go to the S&P, and the S&P is a little different. This pattern here, where you make that H pattern, but hold quite nicely, uh, nicely above the low, in this case, 4222.62, it says there could be another bounce, and that bounce could go to a second arch formation, making what I call a lowercase h to lowercase m pattern. In other words, we're in a rectangle formation. Today's low of 4364. If we take out 4358 on a closing basis, that's going to be negative. It says, it says be careful because the next level of support is right there on the 28th at 4292. Let's go to the QQQ NDX 100. Uh, trying to rally here, it's down 43 cents at 346.56. It's not looking too great, but it, just on the day, it's not looking too bad. So sell mode in the daily, sell mode in the weekly, and I, I'm real close to a sell signal in the monthly. We have to wait for all of February to complete. But all I can say is that a close below 340 in the short term says, wow, be careful. That 334.15 of the 24th beckons. IWM. IWM is trying to uh, rally to the 106, 159 level, 200 period moving average at 156. It's really struggling. It's it's kind of the laggard of the group. Let's go to gold. Gold is acting spectacularly here. Now, I always consider gold to be a, kind of a geopolitical fear factor. Um, it, it's really an icon of what, what many, many people around the world go to whenever there's geopolitical turmoil. I wonder if there is right now. Oh, yes, of course there is. So we're looking at the gold up 30 at 1872. What's interesting is that silver is having a very nice rally. The gold's up 1.64%. Silver is up 2.12%, up 50 cents at 23.87. Just stopping dead at this orange 200 period exponential moving average in the daily. The weekly chart says, hey, it's just stuck in a range. And the monthly chart says, ooh, not a very good chart. So that's why I'm saying I think gold is quite specific. And if you if you want to know why I say that, because look, the dollar is rallying. Usually they work in inverse, like counterpoint in Bach music, where one line goes up and the other one goes down. This is 96.34, up 26 ticks. It's not great, but it's not bad. It's within this rectangle formation. So, um, um, Gold is acting quite well. Now if we go to the crude oil, here's the issue. Crude oil is not just a transitory thing. Crude oil is impacted because geopolitically there's a lot going on. And we are not the producers of, of um, um, petroleum anymore. We've, we've relinquished that very momentary uh, uh, title. And now we have to look to around the world. And crude oil is saying, 
with what's going on right now, uh, it's acting extremely well. It's a 94.70 up a dollar 60. I would say just on the shorter term, uh, any close below 88.50 would say, okay, now we're having a bit of a dip. I don't know why it would do that right now. It still seems to be in play. And yes, the daily, the weekly is strong, and the monthly is broken out in the leg E above the October of 2018 high of 85. 65. What we're also looking for right now is what's going on with bonds. For goodness sake, the history, I always think that when the market gets volatile, when stocks are being sold off like they are over the last month, money tends to migrate from the volatility weakness of stocks into the so-called safety of bonds. Not this time. So therefore, I am going to say this time is different. And in fact, there's a chart that I will show. Maybe I'll have a little a, a chance in a, in a little while uh, to, to show the chart. Um, during the break, I'll set it up and we'll see if we can look at it. And that's my triple yield chart showing all the different yields as well as um, with the iShares of the Global Timber and Forestry ETF and the Philadelphia Housing Sector uh, Index. We'll look at that in a moment. But what I wanted to also say is that the volatility index, this VIX index, is trading up um, 2.18 at 29.54. It went to 32.04 today. And this is the first time I've included Russia in all these years with, with my titling of these big spikes up. Look at this in the monthly chart. All these big spikes to the upside. Um, I, I used, it used to be the Greek crisis back in 2011. It was China and domestic uh, and interest rates back in, uh, what is it? Uh, that was... August of 2015 hits uh, 53.29, higher than the Greek crisis at 48, and then it pulls back sharply to the 8.84 level. This is the volatility index. Spikes up to the 50.30 higher yields to, uh, on the uh, uh, February of 2020. That's both, again, yields, tariffs, China, uh, the Saudis we even included. And there was a whole thing with impeachment back of the high of 36.20 in 12.20, that's December of 2018. And then it pulls back. And then we had that whole coronavirus business uh, fed huge spike to the upside, 85.57. And that was March of 2020 when the market made its low on the 23rd of 2020. We'll be back in a moment. Basil Chapman sitting for Tom O'Brien. This is the Tom O'Brien Show.